can get um, a good amount of creatine through foods, meats, uh, beef, and chicken. And there's so many things that would come into play in order for you to actually bulk yeah. when it yes. comes to taking creatine. Welcome to the podcast with me, your host, Dr. Deborah Durst, and I have my co-host and I have a special guest with us today. Hey guys, Faraday Golombieski, nurse practitioner here at Revitalize MD, and I'll let Dr. Durst introduce our special guest. Meredith Wallace. Again, Meredith works with us in the office. She's amazing. She is our laser specialist, but that is just touching on the surface. Her background is education and fitness, and again, high level fitness and bodybuilding competitions and all the things. So Training, I'm going to let her. Nutrition, health and wellness. Way too much. I could go on. So I'm going to let her say a few words and then we'll dive into our exciting topic today, which is creatine. Sure. Hi guys, I'm Meredith. I've worked for Dr. Durst for almost four years now. So um, I love doing everything possible here at Revitalize MD. And today we are going to talk a little bit about creatine and all the amazing benefits. I feel like men are already really aware of the supplement, but women are not so much. They think that it's kind of a man supplement, and that's definitely not the case. There are so many therapeutic reasons to use creatine. There's so many um, sports related reasons to use creatine. It's great for blood sugar. It's great for um, fast twitch muscle fibers. It's great for endurance. It's great for so many things. So um, if you want to get a little bit more information just about some of the research that we've been looking at and all the studies that have been done, there's so much to, to talk about when it comes to creatine oh, and yeah. so many amazing ways that we can use it. So we're going to kind of just touch on some of those things. And obviously, if you guys have questions, um, you can write us about that. But we'll touch the surface and give you all the information that we can have right now on kind of what we've learned and our experience in the product as well. I've used it for years myself and with all of the fitness athletes that I have helped in a lot of the nutrition and events that I've helped people prep for. This is just an amazing supplement and really there's nobody out there that it cannot have Correct. great benefits for. I think that was this one of the coolest things. something that we've learned, yes, along the way. So we'll just problem. say that, like, again, Meredith does fitness, she does training, she does nutrition, she has an extensive background in all of that. They do the Knox Classic bodybuilding competition here. Again, she's always, um, you know, I guess kind of staying on Faraday and I about fitness and nutrition, yes. but... When we were deep diving into the research and uses of creatine, it was actually eye-opening because I think that what you touched upon is women don't know. And I didn't know like all the benefits and I'm thinking, why am I not on this every day? That's it. That was probably one was of the, the biggest first... things. I'm like, why am I not taking five grams every day of this? There's really no reason I shouldn't be. There's no. really no reason any of us shouldn't be. Right. No. It's fantastic, like Meredith said, for the performance side of it, but there are so many health aspect benefits to this. It blew my mind. Correct. And so I think when I think about all the videos, the podcast, the that I've listened to and watched over the years on creatine, it's always fitness and it's always, and I hate to say this, but it seems like it's men talking about fitness and muscle building and sometimes at an In the men's fitness, fitness world. Yeah. And so I didn't, you know, I know that it is a very touched upon topic there and I know it's super researched and safe and effective. But the fact that I didn't know a lot of what I was reading just tells me that there is an untouched you know, viewer audience out here and it's women in, in aging, the aging population. So as we hit andropause or perimenopause or menopause, and of course it starts in adolescence, but I feel like that is a touched upon topic, but now we're going to touch upon like all the health benefits. Like it right. was amazing. So an overview of creatine, if you kind of want to go into a little bit of like you know, sure. I guess historically people used to load, maybe they don't. We'll go into some basics on creatine and then we're going to touch 
on some benefits and some studies yeah, that sure. support that. Um, so when it comes to creatine, and some of you may or may not know that you can get um, – a good amount of creatine through foods. And I think that that's very important as well for people to know that it is a naturally occurring substance in our bodies. Um, but getting it, getting an extensive amount through foods like meats, uh, beef and chicken and pork and salmon. You can also get it a lot through um, seeds like sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, uh, walnuts, I believe is another one. What a lot like of vegetarians, your, a lot of your proteins. It's really going to be a lot harder for vegetarians. They're really going to have to take a supplement in order for that. There are some leafy greens and broccolis and things like that. Some of your greens are going to have small doses of creatine in them, but you're not looking at more than about 0.75 grams or maybe up to three grams per serving. So you're going to need to eat a lot of foliage to be able to get that all in. <laughs> I don't think all. any of us are, no. are prepared for it that. Like mostly so, red meats is where it was yes. the most... Your red meat, dish, yes, your best poultry, form. yes. Yeah. Um, so, so it is readily available in a lot of foods, but obviously, some people just don't have time to get in as much of what they need, which is why you know lots of people create all of these greens powders and and all the things that you can get just with a scoop of whatever and it's mixed with water. And it's an inexpensive. Correct. It's supplement. very expensive, just like all proteins and seeds and nuts Where are. Creatine yeah. powder by itself is not. Right. Yeah. That yes. also blew my mind. The supplement. Oh, cost mm -hmm. effective. Yeah. For what it is. I can't believe it. Yeah. Specifically, the creatine monohydrate. There are lots of other forms of creatine. I think that creatine monohydrate is one of the most readily available and much cheaper forms. It comes in a powder form that it obviously is going to be more bioavailable to us and it's going to get in our systems a lot faster. Mm -hmm. um, we and don't actually, necessarily have to load like we used to. So it's you're not going to see, um, you're not going to have to wait weeks and months before you really see the benefit of that. I think with the, within three to five days of starting to take a creatine source of some form, there's enteric coated tablets as well that help kind of um, get straight to in the case source. You don't like that powder, right? In case the powder, the powder's actually not too bad. Yeah, yeah. it's not too bad. Yeah. It's not I've, bad. I've been pleasantly surprised. Yes. <laughs> well, and I think again, like you can get it in nutrition, but it's such an inexpensive supplement when you're mm -hmm. just actually taking the powder. Or, right. Um, right. And it's when it's mixed with greens and all the other things that it probably gets mm -hmm. a little more expensive, mm -hmm. but. The other issue is that about we do make it in the body, but we only make about fifty percent no, of what not. we need. So, mm -hmm. and yeah. I wanted like Faraday and I've went back and forth about the loading because yeah. you know it used to historically be loaded yes. in the fitness world, and it sounds like maybe you might see some effects quicker. But really, just starting to supplement mm -hmm. is good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything and, I found online shows that. You know, that is more of a older school thought was that loading that creatine, it doing is. like a 20 gram load. But the side effects that come with loading like that, the GI side effects, the bloating, the diarrhea, yes. mm -hmm. um, that it's not worth it or necessary. Mm -hmm. All the newer stuff um, that I came across had really just five grams daily and don't worry about loading. But what Meredith kind of touched on was creatine monohydrate. That does seem to be kind of like the gold standard. Mm -hmm. But if you cannot tolerate that, there are other forms. But really, if you can tolerate the monohydrate, that is the form that you want. And you could take just lower doses. Right. It That's what I was works. just going to say. Yeah. Maybe starting, mm -hmm. especially for women, you know, if you wanted to start at like a 2.5 gram dose for maybe a week or so and see how your gut kind of tolerates it, um, there's really no need. Mm -hmm. You can always titrate up. There's no need in just forcing, you know, a lot of people, especially men, they will be like, well, you need 10 grams and then then you, the next week you need to do 20 and then, and it's a constant like build, build, build. And that's not necessarily required. And it totally depends on your goals. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the creatine itself for women as well as for men, you know, it helps that ATP production, which is your be energy more, of your cells, yeah, be more viable, which gives us more energy. So that water, we think, oh, it's going to make me retain water. That's not a product that I want because the scale is going to make us be like, oh, 
I put on it's the, the holiday. I can't it's, look at. Yeah. I can't look at that. The number. holiday fifteen, and really, it's you know it's that water. Yeah, you know, that water is going hydration. into your muscles, right? So you want that water in your muscles. That's what helps to recover your muscles mm-hmm. from exercise. That that's what mm-hmm. gives you um, that protein synthesis. You have to have water in order to make that happen, and it's just so underused and people just look at it from a different perspective yeah and you're actually gonna it does draw water into the muscle which also makes sense that you might get gi yes. side effects or you know some loose stools along with it because it's going to draw water into the gi tract but actually hydrated muscle is better yeah, healthier for muscle. muscle building Correct. and protein you know building and so that's a necessary component and but less, that's a side effect women yeah. think about right less bloating injury. and weight yeah. yep And like Meredith said, it is a primary role in our cells developing ATP or replenishing that ATP. So when you're doing these high intensity workouts and you're blowing through that cellular energy, when you're taking creatine, what that allows is to kind of recycle it. It allows the body to kind of get that extra little burst to create more ATP. And for those of you that love that science part of it, we'll do another like short podcast that talks about more the cellular mechanism of that but it can get pretty intense and we won't even go into it in that much detail but it is kind of cool once you look at how it you know is taken in taken up by the cell and converted but I think the other side effect that women think about is or that people hear about I shouldn't say that women think about is the kidney issue so you hear a lot of stuff again creatine is not creatinine just so you know creatinine is the kidney marker which isn't always a great marker for kidney function but people think if the creatinine goes up with creatine and that's a kidney issue and so we can go into that a little bit too but it's a and different form it's a different, mm-hmm. form. It's a different form so it is not creatine and creatinine are not the same thing But, of course, if you're building more muscle and bigger framed people, more muscles, more active, are going to have higher creatinine. So it's not always a great marker. So, but it doesn't affect. There are, it's a safe supplement and that's the important thing. So it is not going to hurt your kidneys, but you may see an elevation in your creatinine. So if, for instance, you had one kidney or you have kidney disease, that's a whole different matter. And that's where you have to Healthy, working kidneys right? yes correct of course then it is not going to hurt your kidneys so yeah. um so that's not true you know that it actually affects the kidney function ultimately because you um it's not creatinine mm-hmm. although you may see that elevation but again the dosing we're talking about is for healthy functioning yeah. kidneys and you're going to see a creatinine in influx anyway whenever you're lifting there's more, and say, there's more yes. water in your muscles <laughs> you're trying to create more protein mm-hmm. synthesis or you are up very fatigued mm-hmm. because the creatine also helps with fatigue because obviously if you're having an uptick in that atp you're going to feel like you can go longer kind of like mm-hmm. Kind of like a better version of caffeine because like, we use caffeine to keep us going, right? Well, we need something. Which is what's bad in the pre workouts. Yes. yes. <laughs> we need something that's more stable long term to give us that kick without something having to drop us up and drop us down. It keeps us more stable, which again leads us to the insulin conversation, which we can touch on a different podcast of the, that. Being able to regulate insulin levels a little bit better, which so many other things do that as well, and well, that's one of done. the that's one of the health yes. benefits of it. It's we can talk about benefit. again another yeah. like you know ten to twenty health benefits that you can recognize with creatine that I didn't know about until I was deep diving into the research with this. But again, insulin mm-hmm. sensitivity is improved, which is huge. Right. Um, blood sugar regulation, so it's helpful for diabetics. There's studies that support that. And but even it, just insulin regulation for all of us. Correct. Every yeah. day. I every mean, day. everybody needs, if, if you didn't know, you know, if, you're, if your insulin levels are stable, then that reduces the risk of you having um, more fat. Storing you know, more fat. The storage of the yeah. fat is going to increase. I was wondering how you're going to bring that up. I know. I'm like, <laughs> if you're doing, if your insulin levels are constantly, you know, coming up and going back down because you're, you're only eating when you're hungry and then it's junk and then you come up and then you drop down really quick, you know, if you're, you're going to store fat. So that's a, just mm-hmm. another great benefit of that creatine trying to stabilize those insulin levels. If you wanted to just use it alone, 
if you're trying to do minimal amounts of exercise, then, you know, that's highly recommended, obviously, for everybody individually, um, because it also has a great... Um, Are you looking at me again? And, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That the, you're going to the do dopamine, minimal, you're going to do yes. regular exercise. <laughs> Those of you that want to exercise, no. the I think um, again we can touch on this in another session, but you know it has. There's a lot of st studies on the dopamine increase when using yes. um, this as well, and I think that. Uh, yes, for people with yeah. Parkinson's and, you know, it's always recommended that people that have mental acuity issues and are developing these She's like, because it's neuroprotective. All, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. She's talking it about is. those health benefits again. Yeah. Antidepressants work better. Mm -hmm. It helps with dopamine regulation. It's neuroprotective mm -hmm. for neuro um, degenerative diseases and again yeah. cognition it's yeah. huge yeah. so as we get older in conjunction right? with exercise brain gut clarity. liver brain benefit yeah, yeah. All yeah. of it. Fatty liver is a common issue. Mm -hmm. And again, as we're, insulin levels are going up and down and we're storing more fat, it's going to the liver as well. So it's helpful for fatty liver. I mean, we can go on about the, the difference. So, But Maris did touch on one thing that I do want to bring up because it's something that, it's a misconception that I myself fell into, which is the, it's a male supplement. Mm -hmm. Actually, I thought this was And yeah. that... I don't want to take something that's going to make me bulk up. I don't yeah. want to retain all this water. Yeah. If I'm not working out heavy, I don't need it. I mean, it really was, you know, you know, it helps with creating ATP. You know, there's benefits, but I was like, mm. but is it really going to benefit me? I'm Am I, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not really trying to gain a bunch of weight to turn yeah. into muscle. I'm just yeah. trying to tone. Is this really a, the right product yeah. for me? Because that's the misconception behind it is that I think of creatine and I think of bulking. Mm -hmm. And well, it's I not necessarily and I think, true. Well, I think we think of that because, again, every video, everything you watch on it is in the fitness bodybuilding community. At least I have watched. That's what I've watched. So I didn't think it was – I wasn't too worried about getting bulked up, you know, but um, – And but, as, well, yeah. I, <laughs> but if I you're loading think, and you're going to the gym, I mean, yes. it's a concern yes. is to pull on all this extra I think that's, load, that's another reason yeah. to not load as well, especially. And it all – that it's, it's a very mm – -hmm. It can be a very detail oriented conversation about, you know, you have to have women have to have a great deal of testosterone in yeah. order to bulk, a great deal mm -hmm. of creatine in order a to of bulk, a lot of protein, Resistance you know, training. so there's this. so many things that would come into play in order for you to actually bulk yeah. when it yes. comes to taking creatine. So. So it, when we're talking about a load, just so you know, again, it was like a 20 gram historically they would do, and it was multiple times a day, like five grams, four times a day and just a five gram. Now we're talking about normal, healthy. If you're, if you have medical issues, you're on medicines, you should always check with your doctor, but like it's a five gram per day, but smaller amounts work as well. And it sounds like what I read is like, maybe if you're doing a load for five to seven days, you might start building a little earlier but it's not necessary you're still not waiting months you know yep. if you're doing it on a daily basis but it does need to accumulate in the muscle and yes. so 95 percent of creatine that we take in is actually stored in the muscle and usually 95 percent yeah so and then there's a lot in the brain too but you actually right. need to accumulate that so yeah. taking it once or twice and going to the gym is not going to work either no. you have to take it on a daily basis to actually accumulate it in the muscle and then if you stop taking it because there was a lot of cycling stuff too that mm -hmm. I read about yeah. and really not necessary um, it doesn't seem on any of the studies that it's really necessary to do but there's some down regulation of yes. receptors that could happen and um, have you ever then, seen any pretty negative side effects from anyone taking a lower dose in your practice training with anyone and that's no. kind of like the no. consensus of yeah. everything I I think listen to and read to yes the only time is when people just like with anything else when they're not when they're not doing it properly and using the recommended dose you know if they try to do 20 grams for weeks on end just because more is better right and but more is not always better that that is more not is always just the case. exactly that more right right yeah. it's just more. <laughs> so there you will get some yeah. subcutaneous water that you do not want you mm -hmm. know if you're doing 20 grams for two weeks just trying to have an extra load but it's not necessary what about brands is there any brands that you particularly like over others or is it pretty much if it's just 
creatine monohydrate, you're good to go. Yes. As long as long as it is a reputable company, I feel like you're fine. You know, most we will probably have one in the office before long and yeah. then next door at the health shop, you know, we have there's and I think finding, multiple. Yeah, finding a health shop and a, a vitamin Reputable shop, shop that yes. you trust right. is doing the research for you because it's not, you know, supplements aren't regulated, which is why yes. again you know, the health shop has, that's why we ended up right next to it. Cause I was there all the time. Yeah. Before, so we have a health shop. Trust. We are very lucky to have yes. an amazing health shop right next door to us. Correct. So we are able to send our patients next door for supplements if we don't carry them or mm -hmm. just for the nutritional, yeah. um, guidance, the, but, yeah. um, exercise plans, nutrition plans, just to really get them to be the healthiest versions of themselves. And it's just, I mean, that supplement is just like any other supplement, which is why, you know, you don't go to Walgreens and buy your Costco. B yeah, complex yeah, yeah. or Costco yeah. or Walmart. You really right. need to, they'll even take name brand things and kind of give their own spin to it and add a supplement or add products or byproducts into those supplements that are not, that are just fillers. So you really need to read your labels and make sure that it's consistent with the better brands mm -hmm. and just go to a reputable company or a local health shop that is going to only carry good products so you make sure to get a high quality product and sadly enough we have not had it in the office and like faraday and i have mentioned we were both we will be though why we yeah. had not been on it and so as soon as i was reading all the studies i'm like we're getting it. So we'll have medical. Oh, yeah. I well. immediately dove into my husband's yes. stash yes. that he has. I was like, yeah, no, what I'll be doing? doing a scoop of this now. <laughs> Correct. Yes. <laughs> well, when I did a Google search, again, 450,000 articles just based on um, a Google Scholar search is searching creatine and performance studies. So it is the most studied, safe and effective, we know. But some of the other health benefits that, again, we got into um, some of them, but even with pregnancy, reproductive health, yeah. health is another one. Again, the fetus is dependent upon the mother's, you know, creatine mm -hmm. supply. And so, that, and it's safe, you know, again, it says, you know, of course you want to check with your doctor and there's not a ton of studies, but so far no safety concerns there. Children and adolescents, because again, about 40% of students or about so i was reading like high school even like athletes. high school athletes mm -hmm. yes are that there are safe forms mm -hmm. that if there's there are way other things we should be worrying about as parents other than our creatinine, uh, <laughs> creatine well, exactly, intake you exactly. know <laughs> well about 40 percent of fitness or athletes and high school are on it Mm -hmm. so they're already so taking something yeah. might yeah. as well educate on what they should be taking yes. in amounts yes. to keep them safe there are athletic there are specific brands that are athletic safe if they do if they are drug tested by the ncaa or other affiliations that do do regular testing there are special special particular brands that are that are appropriate for those that are under 18 obviously with parental guidance but there are special brands for those so definitely something to pay attention to and look at for the parents out there that are listening because their sons or daughters are taking it yes because everybody's taking it and you gotta everyone is you taking gotta it. do all the other students are doing well and a lot of what we were talking about again is so if it's eight if it's cellular metabolism and it's more effective cellular metabolism then any organ in the body would be would benefit. So we've already talked about brain and uh, liver and, and liver and, and, kidney. and kidney. But if we talk about like as we get older, obviously we're noticing weight changes. So this is where I can't believe that I haven't been on this no, and recommending it going. to every woman. Like all day long, we hear about body composition changes and oh, weight yeah. changes. And so we talk about resistance. We talk about protein intake we you know are optimizing hormones but again creatine alone will help you build muscle better and it's the most um used supplement to do so and so that's one we have bone loss and i know i kind of feel bad for all my patients out there sorry mm -hmm. five grams of creatine a day well when we talk about <laughs> bone support and we're talking about hormone production I and know. vitamin d but creatine and likewise i do loss. i mean yeah. we talked about and it and like we did a disservice we need to be Right. So we talk to everybody about you it, just like we talk about everything less else. Less fat and better bones. And yeah. again, there's heart, there's brain protection, there's that pregnancy thing that we talked about: glucose metabolism, better cholesterol, lipid panels. I mean, it is amazing. Even PT and rehab and recovery. 
Absolutely. You know, and if we've missed anything on that list, please add in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> yes, correct. Well, cancer, like lowering your cancer risk, and there's certain types of cancer. Um, but also a lot of those studies talked about vitamin C along with that. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, we can deep dive into the various areas and some studies related to that. But uh, in just review and fatigue, chronic fatigue, yes. oh, yeah. um, even post-viral, which was a big thing with uh, COVID mm -hmm. and viral long and fatigue after COVID. long haul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but you know what I thought was the most interesting and we could end with this is skin health, collagen oh, yeah. production. <laughs> right. It can be so used gross. topically right. as a wrinkle cream. Like, yeah. what? yes, I mean, so not try that one yet. That but. means right. that you know who you are. There'll be a compounding pharmacy. We will be calling. I know. You know. know. You know who you you're are. You're going to be mixing something up for us. <laughs> Just get time. ready. Yes, we put it everywhere. We're gonna be this is your everywhere. warning. Yeah, get ready for us to give you a call. I mean, you have better energy, you know, better meaning the skin, the cells of the skin and metabolism and antioxidant, but also wrinkles and smoothing and collagen production. Yeah. Like Can we I microneedle no that into yeah, our we're gonna be, yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to be, um, you know, again, coercing our compounding pharmacy to now produce something topically as well to use. So, but it's amazing. And so, again, Meredith is a wealth of information. We utilize her all day long um, in the office on that. And again, she's yes. great with the aesthetic and beautifying part. But as we start to really um, focus in on on health and fitness and comprehensive health and fitness, especially as we um, expand even. Right, you know, so getting we don't want to just look the... good here. We want to look good here. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. that's <laughs> correct. And I think there's so many different things like, you know, sauna, the cold plunges, like the creatine, just the things that we can do from a even Whole daily, body health. Absolutely. you know, daily things for fitness and intermittent fast and sleeping better. You know, I think we need that comprehensive addressing of aging as it happens so that we can age well, right? right. And do all the things. Is that what you said? I said okay. We want all yeah. the things to look yeah. good, right? <laughs> we can't just laser here. No. no. So we can do all else? the things. Yeah, we need all the things. <laughs> I don't think so. No, Pretty I much. think, yeah. And I think that, um, so for 2024, that's going to be one of my goals is like a, a big, huge, you know, kind of health stride and balancing better and a bod pod might be a good start with that i mean we have uh, sorry in body yeah. with the body composition but even just following that as we start to really yes. supplement and load with not right. load but supplement with creatine to see the differences and i'll be interested along, so. to see if my inflammation markers come down with that alone because yeah. she's beating me right now on inflammation yeah. markers and we can't have that. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's well, a competition. We can't, we can't so. really compare or we even can't compete with Meredith. Meredith. At least I can because, compete with Dr. Durst. Yes, yeah, exactly. Well, we're always in competition about something. It could be anything. AccuFit. You have and to be. You know, yeah. you have to be. It's fun. Life is a competition, right? So. Yeah. All right. Well, so leave comments. So women, I definitely would love to hear comments about people, women that don't know. Or who have um, introduced much, creatine into their yes. routine and the benefits that they're changes, seeing. Right. Absolutely. Right. And just an aging in general and the benefit of creatine. So as, if you have any experience, please share it, like, subscribe, and let us know what you want to hear more about because we're willing to deep dive into anything wellness and sexual wellness. Thank, Thank you. you.